Welcome everybody to Pro Wrestling Wire Radio here on ProWrestlingWire.com. This is Rick Del Santo. Uh, this week I am joined by Uncle Otis. I've got some very special announcements that I'm going to kick off with uh, right away. But however, let's say hi to Uncle Otis. Otis, how the hell are you? Hi, Uncle Otis. Oh, yeah. Hey, Rick, what's up? It's my good book professor. My good buddy. So now we're saying hi to you. Now everybody else is going to have to say hi to you. But this is going to be a regular thing. We're going to have to be saying hi to Uncle Otis every Sunday evening now. Because Uncle Otis, um, as of what, last week, uh, we had a very special conversation. Now Uncle Otis is a permanent part of Pro Wrestling Wire and Pro Wrestling Wire Radio. Welcome, Uncle Otis, to the show. Uh, thank you so much, Professor. I, uh, I'm happy to be part of this. Is, uh, something that, it's a, something to be able to share news and the and interviews and reviews, as I say, in some of my uh, social media posts. It's it's going to be fun. It's exciting, and we're off and running. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, and of course, um, as of this week. Or should I say last Friday, so two Fridays ago it should be, that um, Uncle Otis and I have become, I guess you can say, business partners and now uh, full owners of ProWrestlingWire.com. So we are here to, we want to make uh, this a very special thing and uh, we want to give the independent circuit, no matter where, across the country, across the world, uh, just a, a, a good boost and give the fans of independent wrestling a place to go to find out about in, independent wrestling, uh, independent wrestling podcast interviews, uh, analysis, um, and all that stuff. The, the website is going to have a huge emphasis on independent wrestling. Uh, you know, it, it will have some of the bigger stuff, but maybe not as much because we are absolute uh, fans of independent wrestling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we know that independent wrestling, it, it needs that push because there's so many people that just aren't really familiar with uh, just how much there is out there to see. Yeah, there's wrestling all over. You might have wrestling right in your uh, hometown, right in your, uh, you know, at the high school, local high school, uh, maybe a training facility in your in your town that you live in. Uh, it's hard, but, uh, you know, if uh, anybody in the, uh, in you know, they want exposure, they can always, always reach out to us here at ProWrestlingWired.com. Uh, my email, ProWrestleZone at gmail.com or PWZPodcast at gmail.com. I got two different emails uh, regarding a former podcast that I was on, and those are my permanent emails. So if anybody wants to reach out for, uh, you know, you can send us results to your shows. You can talk about upcoming shows. uh and uh, you know we're here to help build, and uh, the independent scene is it's a it's a flourishing scene. The independent wrestling is uh, very hot right now, and we are here to help and push it along. Yeah, and I uh, you know uh, as you had touched uh, on, you could find. Um, I mentioned this a while back uh, when I was uh, visiting with a, a friend podcast. Uh, podcaster of you and I, and uh, I said that, that you know I had no clue that there was pro wrestling, independent wrestling, pretty much almost in my backyard. Um, right, and I just went to a show and I was blown away by the talent and and uh, you know, the the things really cool about it is that if you Google you know press and independent pro wrestling near me, you'd surprised that you said training facilities uh come and you can also uh even if they're not based in Connecticut, they're in New York or Massachusetts, they still have talent that does shows here in the state of Connecticut. And um you could go to a show literally almost every weekend. And some yeah. uh, promotions do come during the week as well. You know, you're somebody who has a weekday off. You could possibly catch a show. And the price is, it's half of what it costs to go to a movie. 
you know. I mean, it's uh, you know, you you go to WWE events, right? And it's uh, it's um, you are going to spend, you know, probably. Fifty dollars, more than fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, probably. And I, I notice if you look at some of the tickets, they're hundreds of dollars for WWE events. Yeah. And this is a simple Monday Night Raw uh, ringside seat. You know what I mean? So you can go to wrestling, internet wrestling from anywhere. From I know the shows that you know I, I look at things and uh, prices, and I get things uh, sent to me, flyers and all that other stuff. That shows are anywhere from like five dollars to like fifteen or twenty dollars. You know what I'm saying? So it's well worth the price. You can bring your whole family to go for a, for a reasonable price. Absolutely. Um, it, like you said, some of uh, even the non televised shows of um, the, the, we'll call them big league, uh, just for the sake of conversation, the, uh, WWE or AEW, whatever their seats for one seat could sometimes cost as much as it would be for you to take your wife and three kids to a show right. because the independent shows a lot of times kids get like a half price tip sometimes less and they're yeah. always fan friendly you know yeah and uh there's it's more of an intimate intimate experience you can get to meet some of the guys there's meet and greets uh before the show and during intermission you know and some of these guys you know they're at our level you know at the you know at the fans level they will sit there and speak you know what i mean you know what one of the things is that i always appreciate dude now or that i i find um great is some of the shows that we work right now we um obviously I work for several different organizations as a as commentary, as you come in with as a photographer for, and now you're doing a little bit more, but you, um, with, um, several different companies like Coliseum or new age wrestling, uh, <clears throat> based out of Springfield, Connecticut and Springfield, Massachusetts, uh, respectively. So one of the things that is there's a little, you know, there's Mr. Alan Bano. Okay. He might, uh, he might be a heel when he's out there wrestling getting the booze but there's this one little guy that comes in he's dressed up like alan bano he's a huge fan now he's from i guess his family said enfield connecticut when i spoke with him now they drive from to west haven connecticut where coliseum book shows and then where they will come to the shows in springfield mass for new age wrestling just to see alan bano and get that intimate experience and they're you know, they're a great family. You know, his kid's a really nice kid, and that is his favorite wrestler. He comes in with the same vest that he has on. He's a huge fan. And Alan Bana will sit there, and I know he appreciates it. I see him standing there, sitting there every time he sees him, taking his time to hang out with him and talk. And that's the difference with professional wrestling, like uh, independent wrestling and going to, like, the majors. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, That and that that we've seen that. A uh, little boy and family, pretty much <laughs> almost everywhere Al does go, and that that uh, that little boy, where is it? Whom we call little Alan Bano. Yeah, um, Bano. He, yeah. So, like you said, even though I'm heel here or there, he he can he had a soft spot. For this kid, he really did, because this kid always had signs. He was probably his biggest fan, and Alan literally gave him his vest with the poker chips and stuff. Mm -hmm. And that kid was that vest at every show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. And that's the enjoyable part about independent wrestling. So there you go. So uh, you were at a show last night. Yeah, I, I went to the uh, Paradise League Pro Wrestling's Bash at the Brewery show, and that was held at the Otta Brewery in, right here in Navin, Connecticut. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh. Yeah, I have uh, yet to make it one of the brewery shows. I guess they started there last year, and now they're, they're this is going to be their second year, and I think that if I remember correctly, either one or two have been canceled this year already because of um, weather. Or maybe one happened, but it ended up being really cold uh, that night. Yeah, um, they can't. Well, I believe that every time that it had canceled, it was because of the weather. You know, typical right. New England weather. Friday, it says it's going to be beautiful tomorrow. And then all of a sudden it's not, you know. Right. But, um, 
I, I have to tell you, Rick, my friend, my brother, you need to get one of these Armada shows, Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling shows, because as much as we enjoy going to the shows at um, a training center, it's a complete different experience because there, because there's just they're outdoors. Um, it's there's just more room for uh, mingling. The, the wrestlers uh, they have a a, a longer and to come in, you know, so you have a little bit of opportunity to get some pictures and and things like that. So it's. It's a really, really good experience. And and they also had, there was a food truck right there uh, by the gate. So you can run, grab a burger, grab, you know, uh, I had tater tots and a Coke last night, you know, while I was filming. And uh, it was just so much fun. I had a blast. <laughs> so they, um, you got a chance to film some stuff there last night, too. Yeah, I did. Unfortunately, I had some technical difficulties uh, part of the way through, but I uh, did set up a hard cam across from the room, and um, I had to, to look at that because this morning uh, I got up uh, and started mainly on cropping and so forth with my um, the stuff that I do, action shots and things. I started working on that. And what I'll do is um, have a way, it's a little bit sneaky, but it'll work for me, where I will uh, look at what I have on my camcorder, the hard cam, and I could take stills from that. And right. I could meet in the blanks, so to speak. Right, right. Uh, so you got some good photos from what I've seen. You started posting them late last night, I saw. Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember. Oh, that beautiful picture of the... Coliseum Pro Wrestling Strong Will Champion Luis Leon, the premier, if you will. Uh, and then he wrestled, uh, did you say he wrestled Bloodsaw? Right? I did. Yeah. yeah. So he yeah. wrestled Bloodsaw um, actually for the AIWF International Championship, I believe. Yep. So um, you have a pre recorded uh, uh, episode of the potato uh now the potato is the short interview series that you do for the pro wrestling wire uh youtube channel in our website obviously pro wrestling wire.com um so that is going to be released on the youtube channel later today uh and it will um obviously we're going to run it here as well so um why don't we go to that right now hello folks uncle otis here with another potato Brought to you by ProWrestlingWire.com. And today, I have a very special guest. You might know him from seeing him on the independent circuit. His name is Buzz Bloodsaw. Come on in, Buzz. What's going on, Uncle Otis? How we doing today? Good. How you doing? You know, I'm good. I, sorry to bring you out here, but I needed to get to a space where I could get ready for this match. You see, July 19th in Revere, Massachusetts, Supernova Wrestling. I'm wrestling a guy named G.C. Knight. Now, I don't know anything about him because he wears a lot of camouflage. I can't really see him. So I figured a place like this, there's there's green, there's bricks, there's... I can get my eyes right. You know? How do you get ready for things? That's uh, not important right now. What is important is this. G.C. Knight. You've either got somebody who really likes you and wanted you to get a shot at the AIWF International Championship, or you've got somebody who doesn't like you at all, and they put you in there with me. Either way, it's the same for me. I'm going to meet you in that ring, we're going to square off, and I'm going to show you exactly what wrestling is. Now, GC Knight, i got to tell you something, brother. <laughs> Friday... July 19th, Revere, Massachusetts, Supernova Wrestling. This is going to hurt. <laughs> See you there. Folks, you heard it here first. Buzz is not playing around. Back to you in the studio.
All right, and we're back. So that's should be very interesting. The AIWF uh, International Champion uh, Bloodsaw getting ready to for some stiff competition there. Yeah, yeah, he was, but oh, he was really pumped up, and uh, I enjoyed doing the interview. He uh, he's good. He's with with an interview, if you know what I mean. You know, some people interview him. Yeah, you. you Sometimes it takes two or three, you know, get all the information out that you want to get out, either whether it be me with my questions or the, the talent themselves trying to get a point across something in particular. But he he nailed it. He nailed it. I think it took us longer to walk to the brickyard for that then. <laughs> so... So we actually have an episode coming up with um, Bloodsaw in the near future. Um, I uh, I have the date here somewhere in my calendar. I'd have to look it up. But um, I want everybody to keep an eye out for that. He's the AIWF uh, international champion. He will be joining us as a guest um, for on this show to, to going forward to talk about his career, talk about uh, obviously being a in champion in the AIWF. And um, actually, my good friend, a uh, good friend of Pro Wrestling Wire, Vinny Barry, and he has uh, contributed articles for Pro Wrestling Wire, and um, and his podcast is on our network, too, as well. Um, he um, interviewed Bloodsaw, and uh, it was just dropped earlier this week, so I urge everybody to go check it out. So it's, it's, uh, it's a really good one. Excuse me. Excuse me. So... Vinny's uh, Paskin because I it, I don't it's remember. Wrestle, I'm sorry. Wrestleville.com. Vinny Barry is uh, that's it. It's right there, and he runs a great. He, he's run, uh, written books on Lance Von Eric, and he's written books on uh, Black Bart uh, with their, you know, with their uh, obviously with their help as well. So um, there's a lot, um, a lot more coming up. Obviously, the AIWF was involved in more than one uh, occasion last night uh in uh with the uh at the paradise alley show so uh the aiwf atlantic championship um took place with uh sunset steve garcia uh dante hodge and sean silver in a triple threat with the uh and dante hodge walked away the victor uh yeah, actually the match was changed up a tad because uh really Schedule uh, scheduling the card was supposed to be back again Hannibal, but um, I didn't catch the reason why because I was uh, setting up equipment and I didn't hear if they announced why. But Hannibal could not make it last oh. night. The three way became four way dance, and Jekyll okay. was in that, which was a great opportunity for him because now he had a shot at that. Uh, you know which he didn't have beforehand right right uh so how was that matchup how did it go it went really really well actually uh but i <laughs> i think that uh, dante had his entrance of the ring took longer than it did for the entire match and i can't really explain it but he does this work that I think a turtle beat him to the rain. With I mean, it, it was very funny, very funny. Me and Paul Rome were talking about it, and, and we had a little laugh about it. Uh, but Sean he Silver is, is yeah. Sean Silver is a bright young star that's um, coming out of Paradise Alley. I don't think he's really done much outside of Paradise Alley. He's uh. I think he's only been wrestling a few months. So he uh I've uh, had the opportunity to meet him on a few occasions and uh you know going down to the school and and hanging out and stuff like that. So he's a really nice kid and uh Sunset Steve is Sunset Steve. He's been uh involved in the ring wars around here for geez a few years now. So, you know, had to be a great had to be a really good match, I'm guessing. Yeah, it um actually Sean Silver was uh, the longest competitor out of the four, or well, the the three before Dante took it. Um, I believe it was first Jack was eliminated, and then after that, uh, unfortunately, Sunset Steve was eliminated second, and then went on for uh, quite a little while thereafter. 
with Dante and Sean. And um, they really, Sean took Dante to the mat. He really yeah. did. He, he had been quite that all, I thought. Yeah. Uh, of course, there was Alan Compass and Kaizu, the Crocodile King, Alan Compass and Kaizu. Kaizu is a uh, a young up and comer. I think he's just a recent graduate, and I think he only has like two, three, four matches under his belt. Yeah, I believe that uh, this. Well, I could stand corrected, but yeah, it's been a couple matches or a few matches at best. But he did rather well, uh, considering he had to go up again. Uh, and Compass and Frank. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's see what else. Uh, of course, the gentleman that we spoke about, uh, Alan Bano, took down Mirza, the uh, Bosnian Bolt. I got to tell you about Mirza. I just, I think he's on. This might have been his third match. So I um I had the opportunity to see him last month, and I don't know if I spoke about it on the podcast, but I saw him work uh, Troy Stevens and, at the last PAPW event, and I got to tell you. Uh, you weren't there because I think you were still getting over being sick, if I remember. Uh, and I got to tell you, that match was, uh, I mean, it was insane. It was insanely good. It was fast paced. They were just um, just going at it, like going at it constantly. And I was like, I wanted more. I wanted more of that match. I want to see those two uh, go at it again. But let's talk about Alan Bano and Mirza. What did you think of Mirza? I think the kid is really, really good. Yeah. Um he could with he's he's he does a little bit of flying, he does a little of you know, he's all rounded. And yeah. uh he takes well, he's he's you know uh, he's just all around good and anybody that is uh been following independent wrestling, pro wrestling will they would say, think to themselves, well, if the guy's a recent graduate, you know, he probably needs a little time for his belt before. If this is this good now, I can't imagine he's going to be like, you know, four years from now. Because yeah. he's great to bring awareness uh, and fast. Like, see where Bosnian Bolt would come in, you know, right. hard. He's real good. Yep. And then I think the uh, the final match was uh, Killer J and Skyler. Well, it wasn't the final match, but uh, no? Skyler did take that one. Uh, I, um, I, won, I could give you the rundown and point, but, uh, of how sure. matches went. The the last match was the big match, actually. But the match with Skyler and um, Killer J was that was really good. Well, you we know Skyler has, uh, you know, if we've seen her in several matches, and, and she's really good. And yeah. uh, Killer J, I believe she's a new graduate as well, if I'm not mistaken. Right. And she uh, she held her own pretty well, and and uh, so um, people see they follow me on uh, social media, on Facebook and Instagram, a pitch that I post, and you'll see a lot of shots, action shots, where Killer just seemed to have the upper hand. Yeah. But of course, uh, one's gone. Right. Uh, there's more. I'm sorry. It, for some reason, my, my lineup wasn't loading all the way. But... Um, Mr. Z and Stevie Legend, how'd this one go? Because I'm a, uh, I got a chance to see Mr. Z uh, at the last PAPW show. Um, I'm trying to remember who we wrestled. Uh, and Stevie Legend, that's a gentleman that's been uh, around here for a little bit. Uh, he has a legendary career, I guess you can say. Yeah, the the match you're talking about with the, the previous match with Mr. Z, I think that was with against Al Compass. Yes, I'm not yes, that was part of the, I believe that was part of the AIWF, uh, or no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, excuse me, the PAPW King of Paradise uh, tournament, that's what that was a part of, yes. Yeah. yeah. I like him, I like him yeah. a lot too. Um, yeah, well, you know, Alan is, is, a, is a favorite, and he's, he's a friend, and uh, last I, I actually became a little concerned, because, <laughs> because Mr. Z, he first of all, he's a big dude. I mean, he towered yeah. over me half at least, and uh, 
and he's not a rail either. He's he's you know he's put together well, and he took Alan Cumber to Matt in that match that you talked about. And what I heard a look here and there but last night, and he done. Uh, looking at my notes here now. Who did you just say? It was Stevie Legend and uh, Mr. Z. Yeah, Steve Legend. Uh, Steve, uh, he did lay last night, but he took a little bit of a beating because uh, Stevie is Legend is probably an average size for the most part. Um, he's got some time under his belt now, but um, last night this the new guy really I think took him for a, a, a carnival ride that he wasn't expecting. Not only <laughs> that, <laughs> but Mister is a scary character. Yes. He's a scary. Character. <laughs> so it reminds you of like it, it's reminiscent of like maybe the Undertaker or Kane or something like that, similar to that. Um, in the risk of being a big scary, yeah, he falls in that category, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. but uh, uh, he's also a uh, 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 something new to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of these, uh, if you want to use the rookie, uh, I don't, know, but for newbies, are really, they're they're all were very impressive last night. Right, right. Uh, so, of course, it was the Gordon Brothers and R&B. R&B are the Paradise Alley Tag Team Champions, Jermaine Marbury. And as I mentioned uh, before, Troy Stevens, who uh, uh, they are the Tag Team Champions. They won those belts from the Pyramids of Power uh, just, uh, I think it was two months ago. And uh, Gordon Brothers, I have uh, I have not seen before. I've, uh, I think I've seen a... Um, Maybe like a promo video, but I've never seen them actually work. How is this one? I only got to see bit pieces of that match because uh, I had to do some breakdown and things like that towards the end because the, the night really did carry on quite a while. I mean, I probably didn't get there till almost 11, but um, I did, from what I did see, the Gordon brothers, they were fast pace um it, you know i guess they were um, more uh how can i more grapply than okay. r&b would by the way and i right. found out last night like i don't like, assume r&b meant something else but it stands for rock and basketball yes <laughs> yes so but we love jermaine and and uh troy so yeah. this is exciting for what I did get to see. Plus, from where I was standing, I was probably a good 70 feet away from the ring breaking down stuff. Uh, and uh, it was almost looking at shadows for me for a little while. But uh, the where the ring area was set up, it was well lit where they were in the crowd and everything. And people stayed, even as it is today. They just and Nate, the crowd went wild all night long. All ever since first test match, they really did. Wow. Uh, so um, then, of course, there was Jeremy Lacroix taking on a mystery opponent. I know who the mystery opponent was, but I'm going to give you the floor on this one. Well, mystery opponent, you know, nobody knew it was going to happen. But then all of a sudden, when the music hit. People knew that it was Hunter Tarka. And, uh, well, we love Hunter, you know, and uh, he definitely, you know, Hunter has a way uh, of ring presence that people just absolutely adore. And he's uh, the kind of guy, he's well rounded and he's right. some other you know, under his belt. And, uh, and uh, it was a fun match to watch because right. uh, Jeremy right. LaCroix, you know, he, he was, he did very well. Uh, as far as, as Hunter is concerned, I don't, I don't, I try not to say the, you know, buy or anything, but Hunter was one of the first people that I saw wrestle. 
when I started getting into this. And so I you got a soft spot. Yeah, we're big uh big fans of his here. He is uh, of course a friend of the show. He's been on the show on a couple different occasions and you know, we're going to have to we're going to have to have him again uh at some point. I would love that because I, I yeah. wasn't uh, part of the business when you got to uh, interview him the last time. And I would really uh, love to do that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you, you said the crowd was wild. Was it uh, mostly uh, brewer, brewery uh, patrons or would you say there was a lot of wrestling fans that came down to uh, enjoy the show? Um, I would say that I saw a lot of people that I do see. Uh, reg- that are regulars because uh, you know people that finally realize that there's independent wrestling so close to home and how inexpensive it is to have a good time on a Friday, Saturday night or Sunday afternoon whatever they have a tendency to follow and right. so I did a lot of new faces I saw a lot of faces I've never seen before that came through the gate as right. opposed to coming through from the brewery um, it, was, it was a mixed crowd, but I'd say that, I mean, I I couldn't tell you numbers, but by looking at the crowd, I'd say there had to be close to a couple hundred people. Wow, that's close great. Um, wow. It's all the way around and, and that and pick tables set up. People brought lawn chairs. It was like it was a real uh it was also like going to a state fair you know i mean people there was food there was drink there was uh, plenty of room to, to walk around mingle and and you were up close and personal wrestlers so it, it it was a and it was an event that i don't want to miss next time they do that i really yeah. want to try it I, I believe it may uh the next one they they talked about I, I could be wrong but I Matt DeCore he's a ring announcer and I think he's Joe thirteenth is the next show with the brewery. June what? So, I'm sorry. You... Okay. All right. July, we'll have to... I think July 13th, but I could be wrong, but uh I believe that be said. Okay. I'll have to keep my I'll eyes out for that. I'm sure the flyer will be uh Posted sometime uh, in the next couple of days. Absolutely. All right. So, uh, all right. So, we got Coliseum Pro Wrestling coming up this coming Saturday, June 8th. We have, um, as of this time, we have uh, a, a stacked show, a stacked show. Um, so we're going to talk about the lineup a little bit. We got about twenty minutes left of the show, so we we're going to talk a little bit about this lineup as it's uh it's going to be a great one. If you've seen some promos being dropped on the Coliseum Pro Wrestling social media, we're going to of course we just spoke about Hunter Tarka, former CPW champion. He's going to be taking on uh, current champion Fly Nine Noria Ega in a last man standing loser leaves CPW match. And this has been building up for well over a year. Uh, the the you know Fly and I have been chasing him. He finally gets the belt about two months ago. Uh, Hunter comes out on the last show after uh, Fly and I defeated PJ Savage and goes after paid in full. And he just uh, he he laid out that challenge for a loser seat leaves CPW match and Hunter accepted that. And last night you were there and you accepted the. Uh, you were there and you filmed the um, you got Hunter to sign that contract. I got uh, Fly and I to sign that contract a week ago. Now, Hunter's signature is on it, and that match is set to go this coming Saturday. Yeah, um, Hunter, uh, he had a few words to say, and, and uh, I'm sure that that'll be released shortly. Uh, yes, to be seen. Um, yeah, at, at the end of the show, Hunter, uh, I, I caught him and I had him come on over and I showed him the contract and, and, uh, showed him where, uh, 
Fly had signed it last week with you at uh, the last event that we uh, we had gone to, and um, he was very quick to sign it. Couldn't sign it fast enough, but he had things to say. So be on the lookout for uh, that when uh, the potato gets released. And they, uh, and Fly and I, I'm sure, is it's going to ruffle his feathers a little bit, which rightfully so. And that's going to be a match. I, I tell you what, Mike, right now, I wish you could see the group I'm saying. <laughs> Just thinking about that match is going to be like freaking out because those two guys, at the last time I saw them, and and they threw the door, that bat in the ring, and they just, um, uh, just they destroyed each other. They destroyed yes. each other. And then, of course, you know, Hunter's a little bit holding a grudge, and rightfully so, because of how, uh, you know, that all went down that day. So, he got shocked he's got with the, uh, yeah, he got shocked with the, uh, with a taser, uh, flying I got in his mom's <laughs> face. Uh, so, you know, it was, uh, it was a pretty drastic, uh, pretty drastic matchup, you know? And they also had, like, every weapon in the world, if I remember correctly. They had uh, a stop sign, and they had a um, door, and they had uh, garbage cans, and, and Fly brought some crutches in. And, I mean, th those guys had so much stuff in that ring. It looked like they, they were, you know, it was Sanford and Son going <laughs> it. <laughs> well, that's a match we're looking forward to this coming Saturday, June 8th. Make sure you're there. Check it out on uh, social media. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the um, you know it's going to be a great show, and uh, we're going to go through the rest of the lineup too. Um, so, the New Age Wrestling Heavyweight Championship is also going to be on the on the uh, defended on this show. The new champion Javar he just defeated Chris Cage just uh, what was it uh, just two months ago, March. And he'll be taking on Mantis. Mantis, I don't really know anything about, but Jay Var has been part of Coliseum Wrestling and New Age Wrestling for quite some time. And he's, uh, I mean, he's a fantastic performer. And he is the, uh, he's a great New Age Wrestling champion. He's not backing down from anybody. He's definitely a, a, a fighting champion. Um, and, and, He's afraid to take anybody on, and and I'll tell you when he won that belt from uh, Chris Cage, he earned it. Yeah, he earned it because he wasn't just going against Chris uh, Cage. You know, he was going against uh, um, all of first class. Chris, yeah, Chris is first class, so it was yeah. it, it was a, a well fought. Was also well earned. Of course, the Miracle Generation going to be taking on the Vetrano Brothers. Miracle Generation, uh, probably the hottest tag team in the independent circuit across the damn country. Of course, uh, you know I've been watching them since they've been coming up uh, in their youth, but now, like literally, those guys are those guys are really out there getting uh, all over the place. And some of the biggest company independent companies all over. Uh, and the Vitranos, a uh, great young tag team. Uh, they just won a tag team gold, I believe. It's the Battlefield Tag Team Championship, if I remember. Uh, so this match, I, I, it's not for that championship, by the way. It's just a competition. Miracle Generation have not teamed up in Coliseum Wrestling before, pro wrestling. They've uh, wrestled singles matches, and it's great to see them as a tag team coming in because this is a, you know, the fans love them. They're They're just incredibly popular right now. And they are a great tag team. Yeah, the um, I can't wait to see them together. Uh, uh, they've been uh, tearing up the tag team scene, and me personally have not had the pleasure of seeing wrestle at tag team. At tag team, the last time I saw uh, Kylon King and Dustin Muller were in sync competitions, and I think it was at. Um, show we went to okay and that was uh probably what three months ago maybe Ye maybe Two. yeah i'm trying to remember yeah and that was the last time and both of them tore it 
and that was in singles competition. So I can't imagine taking two guys that are that good, putting them together and say, have at it, because I, they're going to give everybody they rest a, a huge run for their money. But the Vitrano butter brothers are just that brothers. And right. so they know the next one is thinking before they even fit. And yeah. they're also t- the scene up down New England and, and probably beyond. I mean, I see it all over social media. So yeah. that tear the house down. Yeah. Uh, of course, the New Age Wrestling Fans Choice Championship match. Anytime, Alan Bano taking on Osiris. I've seen uh, I've seen and worked with Bano on numerous occasions for Coliseum and New Age. Uh, Osiris, I've seen work for New Age a couple times. Uh, this should be uh, quite the interesting matchup. Uh, you know, of course, we have a great relationship, Coliseum Pro Wrestling, with New Age Wrestling. Yeah, we uh, I, Osiris was at not the last show at New Age we went to, but the show for that, which right. was uh, the one before the Fresh Air, and uh, yeah. he he tagged up. I can't remember who he tagged with that night, but that was a really good. Now that was the first time I saw Osiris wrestle, and he's really good too. Um, yep. So that that ought to be a pretty exciting match. Uh, and Osiris, he said he's been to Coliseum, has he? This I don't is, know. Uh, I, this, is, this is his debut for Coliseum Pro Wrestling. Yeah. Okay. So that'll be exciting yeah. as well. Of course, the uh, Prince of Greatness talking about, uh, about Sean Knight taking on the specialist at Giorgio Lawrence. And uh, Lawrence, of course, has that mixed martial arts and Muay Thai. Uh, background sean knight of course you know he's a veteran of the uh the area he's a former blood sweat and tears or blood sweat and tears tag team champion excuse me and him taking on uh georgia lawrence this is going to be a fantastic match it's going to be quite the battle for georgia lawrence i'll tell you that much yeah i as you can see i I like george he's uh he's really good and it's better with a match um respectively most wrestlers do you would think. Uh, but I remember watching, he's matured is what it is. I think. Yes. Um, in ring, you know, he's, uh, he's heard a lot and he's, um, he's got some really great moves. The last time I saw Georgia was when he took on Cooper Valentine at CPW. I think great that match. was last month. Yeah. Yeah. It was a very good match. It was really uh, surprise because, uh, you know, Cooper Valentine, I think it was a good matchup as far as skill wise with the both of them. They really seemed to take each other, you know, it was a lot of give and between the two of them, right? So, right. that a, a night ought to be really cool. Uh, CPW Strong Will Championship match the premier Luis Leon taking on the pure ash hole, ash, ash Bennett, excuse me. <laughs> Got me a Nick got me in a tongue twister here. So uh last time we saw Ash uh compete in um Coliseum Pro Wrestling was against uh Hunter Tarka when Hunter was the Coliseum Pro Wrestling champion. <laughs> Laugh it off. Um so it's, uh he's uh quite the competitor now. He's coming in getting a championship this time for the strong will championship, getting a championship uh matchup. I don't think that I've seen Ash Bennett yet in action. However, uh, I am a fan of Lewis Leon, the premier. He is, uh, he really wants to hold on to that belt, especially since he's sporting the new Strong Will Championship strap, which is an absolutely beautiful belt. Right. Um, so I'm sure that uh, Mr. Bennett, will be as much of an hole as he can to get that belt. So. <laughs> That's quite the name, isn't it? Is it not? Um, so it, I'm sure that Ash will put in co- a great competitive matchup for Luis Leon, but don't forget, let's not forget, Luis Leon is very sneaky, and he, uh, you know, it took him a long time to get that, uh, to get that strap, but he got it. He had a great series with 
the former champion, um, uh, Nutrius X, who we have not seen Nutrius X since. Okay, so since. that should be yeah, or since what did I say? Yeah, so we have not seen him since. Um, so it's uh, it should be very interesting, and uh, I'm hoping at one point we get to see Nutrius X come back. I understand he's uh, he's just been very busy. He got married, all that other stuff, you know. Oh, okay, I yeah. didn't know that. I just kind of, you know, because he had that strong will champion for a while, I thought he was just kind of laying low, rethinking things, maybe, uh, you know, taking a little hiatus, a well deserved one, I'm sure. But well, congratulations to him if it, it's because he got married and sport. Um, hopefully, uh, we'll get to see him again soon because he's an exciting player in the game as well. Uh, of course, the Coliseum Pro Wrestling Tag Team Champions, uh, Hustle and Muscle, are going to be there. I have not seen an opponent announced. I just, I'm just i trying to look on the social media. I don't see anything. I don't know if there's going to be uh, an open challenge uh, at anything. Of course, Jay Bricks was not able to make the last show, and um, uh, Ryan Frost stepped in for Jay Bricks. And, of course, that East Stone. You know, they. I thought they did announce who it was that was going to be going up against Hustle and Muscle, and for the life of me, I can't think of who it was. Um, I, I'm almost sure that it was announced just uh, like within the last week. Yeah, I don't have it here, so I don't have it here. So, uh, well, if not, then I will uh, edit that part out. All right. <laughs> My, my well, you know, my um, problem is, is that we attend so many shows, and this is testament to just how many persons are out there that, um, you know, we get to to try and cover, and it, it's difficult for me, especially being green in the business, so to speak, uh, to get my ABCs correct and my, you know, <laughs> and and. Who's pl what player is where this week or next week and and uh, so forth. But and that's why it, it escapes me who I I think it is was going to go up against hustle and muscle. But I have to look into that. So um, yeah, that's on June eighth, Saturday, June eighth. Tickets twenty dollars, two sixty five Main Street, West Haven, Connecticut. Uh, please make sure you're there because it's going to be. An exciting show. It will be, of course, recorded and broadcast on WON Sports. So you will, um, anybody in that area, WONNewYork.net, they will be relaunching June 7th. So the broadcast will be, uh, some of the broadcast will be probably in those days uh, coming afterwards. So um, <clears throat> It's going to be a good show, and I want everybody to come down because anybody that's in the local area, please, uh, you'll have fun. I promise you, you will see an excellent night of professional wrestling. Uh, match that we that uh, let's get us there for a hot second. Um, I see here is uh, Sunset Stephen Garcia against the Red Lion Chris Battle. Also, that's happening I, again. I yes, is okay. that that's still. To my knowledge, yes, it is. I, yes, I didn't put that in the notes. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, these two have been battling for a long time, going back and forth, I think, since, oh, geez, uh, even in Paradise Alley. So these guys, you know, I think that uh, at one point, uh, Chris Battle was a mentor to Steve when he came into business and helped coach him. Uh, so this should be a very interesting match. I think that they met just a couple months ago as well. And we were there for that. I called that match as well. And it was a very exciting matchup. And, uh, Chris is, uh, Chris is a fine, outstanding competitor. It should, uh, he is, I shouldn't even say young competitor. He is a veteran of the ring wars in Connecticut. This is a gentleman that went up against guys like Brian Danielson and, uh, and works, uh, for Northeast wrestling on a regular basis, which is the largest company in our area. So, uh, in the fact that Steve's going in there and going after, uh, Chris, uh, battle, this should be a most interesting matchup. 
Yeah, again, like you said, they, 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 whenever those two get together, it's sure to be a stand on your feet match. You know, they, yeah. they are both very uh, uh, fast in a ring when they want to be. They do a lot of intake uh, as far as moves and, and things like that. And it, I'm just, I'm, I'm blown away that they still are going at it. It's like they have this grudge with each other. They just can't seem to settle. And I don't know if it's just that, you know, Sunset is trying to show him, look, you taught me well, deal with it. Or he's just, you know, he's just trying to get under his skin. You know, the kind of the thing that happens with a teacher and pupil, you know, they kind of sometimes they like to test each other. Attention WFIA members, the virtual 2024 WFI convention will be this fall from September 13th through September 15th, 2024. Scheduled to appear are the world's strongest man, Ken Patera, the world's most dangerous announcer, Gary Michael Capetta, Bill Apton. And just recently signed the High Flyers, Jumpin' Jim Brunzel and Greg Gagne. And folks, there's more coming on board. So run, don't walk to your keyboard. Get on that computer. Check the WFIA.org website and our Facebook page to see when these guys are going to be scheduled and their prices. Folks, if you are not a WFIA member, you will be paying an additional fee. So go to the WFIA.org today and register, become a member and enjoy the pot. So let's uh, talk about one more thing uh, before we get out of here. We got about uh, 10 minutes left of the program. Uh, I don't know if it's going to take a full 10 minutes, but uh, Friday, June 7th, Bristol, Connecticut, Legend Sports Bar. You're not able to make it. You got a busy weekend uh, trying to make it back in time for the Coliseum show that uh, date. But uh, Connecticut Extreme Wrestling makes its debut. Legend Sports Bar, Bristol, Connecticut. I am going to be a part of it. I will be... Uh, the play by play announcer. I'll be sitting in that booth with my good friend Matt DeCourt. And uh this should be a most interesting matchup. And uh this will be live broadcast on kick.com forward slash degenerate media. So I want everybody to go check that out. They uh this is a, a new adventure uh and related to the OWF uh in a in a way. So it'll be broadcast on the same broadcast network uh through kick.com forward slash degenerate media. I do have a lineup here. Uh I'm not really sure but uh if I'm going to you know or if I'm allowed to release most of it but uh, much of it but I'm going to say that uh uh I will say some of it. Uh I got Nate Nastic is gonna be there uh, Splendid Bobby C, Gray Sparks, Greg Sparks, excuse me, I can't even speak today. And of course, the one and only Stevie Legend. So this is Connecticut Extreme Wrestling, Legend Sports Bar. Legend Sports Bar has a fantastic uh, what wrestling there probably once a month now uh, in our area. It's uh, a most unique experience, if you will. Yeah, um, <laughs> but when you and I were at the last show there, um, I was working the show. You had managed, you had managed to get there, you know, in time to see the show, but you weren't working it. Right. And um, the thing that's cool about shows at Legend is it's in your face action, and yes. that's not yes. that's not an expression. It, it is in your face. When I say that you can literally, you know, if you breathe to me, the wrestlers will feel it. <laughs> and and they use the entire bar as their arena for the most yes. part. It's a uh, small ring, 10 by 10 ring, which is very tiny. Uh, the referee sometimes barely fits in the ring. We saw that with uh, ref Mike at that one point. Um who would ref from outside and just jump in for the counts <laughs> and, uh, and uh a lot of matches this is uh this is um supposed to go for a more ecw style feel which uh every show at this uh this area this bar ends up in a bar fight of some to some extent so uh i think last time oh my goodness for that owf show garcia and um uh why not 
Flyni, excuse me. Yeah, how could I forget? Flyni just, I mean, those guys oh. tore the house down. And of course, every time those guys get in the ring, it's a it's a whole nother experience. I, I, every time they they wrestle each other, but this match was was wild, crazy. So I'm really looking forward to this new adventure in Connecticut Extreme Wrestling. It's uh, I guess it's going to have an ECW style feel. And uh, I really like anybody that's listening to this. If you're in the area, in the Bristol, Connecticut area, New Haven area, it's only like a 20 minute drive. Come on out. Enjoy some pro wrestling. There's uh, there's lots of great food at this bar. OK, there's pizza. I had the pizza um, the last time I brought my friend Jack down. We ended up having a couple slices of pizza and a couple beers. You were there. I think you took off when we started eating. But uh, <laughs> but it was a. Uh, <laughs> It was a fun experience. It really was. I had a blast um, going uh, in this venue. So uh, it's definitely, like I said, unique, a unique experience, and it's um, always a fun time. Yeah, the fans are really great, too, than the, uh, watching those, you know. Um, and, and, you know, as odd as you may think because of it being a bar, it's – it's family friendly. I mean, now what's like you're saying, so this may now. be more Hold a little. A oh, it's come an on. all ages show. It's an all ages show. However, I would not necessarily say it's a family friendly show because there's a, a lots of, uh, you know, wild stuff that happens throughout the thing. It's not your traditional professional wrestling uh, product by any means that any of the shows that happen there. We'll just say that. But um, the fans but, get a little rowdy and having fun. You know, there's alcohol, there's food, there's chicken wings that are freaking phenomenal. They, they, it'll tell you right as you're walking the door, best wings in town. Uh, I don't know if that's a lie or not, but um, I did have them. They were pretty good. But there's also, like I said, the pizza. And then the fans there are really get into it. And, you know, you don't always get a wrestling centric fan base when you have shows at bars, but it's usually a fun time uh, with these people here. Okay, so maybe fan friendly is not the the phrase that I should have used, but I mean, let's say if I would say that other than maybe on occasion, you know, say my you know language or something a little rough or or because action is right in your face, like when uh, uh, Fly and I and, and Sun that were wrestling, they literally went over some counters, like some because of the the way they have it set up from the ring. And, right. uh, you know, you got to drink if you're going to be there. But it wasn't it, – now, with the show that's coming, uh, if it's a little more, you know, EW, then maybe, you know, it might be as, you know, family-friendly. When we went to the OWF show, I thought that, I'd be okay with bringing, if I had a young teenager, let's say, you know, 12, 13, 14, it wouldn't be a problem because, you know, the, the action was good uh, and he would have been able to see, you know, stuff up close. So that's what I mean by family friendly. But then again, I'm 62. When I talk about my family, everybody's adults already. Anyway. <laughs> so... All right, we're going to get out of here. I want to say thank you to everybody for tuning in tonight. Uh, make sure you go out there, support independent wrestling, support your local independent wrestling. Independent wrestling is the backbone of the industry. Don't forget to check out independent, excuse me, my bad. Don't forget to check out prowrestlingwire.com. Don't forget to check out our podcast throughout the week. We got, uh, you know, Wrestleville has joined our network. Welcome to Slam Towns. Uh, uh join our network who's going to be covering things like gcw and uh and other such and we're looking for we're looking to change the future and uh support independent wrestling we're going to get more podcasts on our network right we definitely are we're going to be posting those articles and of course uncle otis out here snapping the pictures now officially part of prowrestlingwire.com uh and we're just going to be kicking ass taking names and I hope you all enjoyed this episode, and I want you all to go to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go subscribe to the AIWF Network YouTube channel. Go subscribe to our podcast. Follow our, our excuse me, follow our Facebook page. Follow our Twitter. Uh, follow the Instagram, PW.Wire. 
Um, I want everybody to go uh, friend request Eric Smith. That is Uncle Otis. Uh, I just gave away his uh, shoot name there. Friend request me, Rick Del Santo. Uh, and follow the prof page on Facebook as well because you're going to get lots of really great stuff. Enjoyable content. Mr. Uncle Otis, thank you so much for coming in this week for our weekly radio program. I'm glad that we were able to get this done today. Well, thanks for having me. And and I'm so excited about uh, this is, even though I've done the podcast a couple times before, this is really the inaugural podcast for me because uh, us now being partners, uh, it, it's exciting. It's exciting. We're going to make pro wrestling wire. It really is. So, absolutely absolutely go subscribe and uh go subscribe and follow all the social media i appreciate you all tuning in and thank you very much we'll see you next week